So in the information section for the Slam Dance website, you know, mm-hmm. you talk about back in '95. You right. say you were a group of subversive, cheerful, cheerful filmmakers. subversives. <laughs> nice. Times, uh, Those are my favorite kind of subversives. Yeah. Um, but that you you had been denied from Sundance, and you wanted to kind of do something new. I could see why you would want to begin it, but what made you come back the second, the third, the fourth, and on? I, I, that's that? a great, I still don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, just to talk about why we started Slam Dance a little bit is in 90, you know, 95 was in, in 18, 1995, <laughs> feels like 1895. It was an interesting time in independent film, you know, there had been this great crop of, of, of filmmakers, you know, Sundance filmmakers in the, in the early 90s. And then by 95, the a lot of the institutions of independent film were sort of going Hollywood. So that was the year Merrimax became part of uh, Disney. It was the year Fine Line became part of Warner Brothers. It was the year Fox launched Fox Searchlight. It was kind of the studioization of independent film. And Sundance was kind of part of, you know, that whole change, that whole, um, you know, shift. And as a result, they were programming much more um, second-time directors, uh, directors with working with bigger budgets and bigger stars and that already had distribution. And it was kind of the Hollywoodization of Sundance, for want of a better term. And then we came along in 95, and we had just finished Omaha the movie. Um, and, uh, you know, we actually premiered it at the what was then called the IFFM or, or IFP market in September and, and in previous year, like the previous year, Kevin Smith had gotten picked up there and discovered by Sundance and became Kevin Smith, you know? And so we all thought, all right, well, at least some of us here will get, we'll go to Sundance. And um, as it turned out that year out of the 95 completed feature, narrative feature films at the IFP market, uh, not a single one got picked up to go to Sundance. And so we were like, oh man, that's kind of a drag. But at the same time, we had distributors telling us, good distributors, saying, we love your film, we want to give you distribution if you get into Sundance. And they said it with no shame, it was just very matter of fact. Like, yeah, we'll pick you up if you get into Sundance. Because, and really Sundance was kind of all or nothing, you know, basically. If you got in, great. But if you didn't, you wouldn't get distribution, you wouldn't get um, your next film made, you wouldn't get producers, you wouldn't get agents, you wouldn't get into other regional festivals, you wouldn't get onto, into international festivals, because they all used the Sundance Guide as the kind of handbook. So we had actually heard of um, a couple filmmakers the prior year, in 94, um, who had done renegade screenings in Park City when they didn't get into Sundance. It was, so it was Trey Parker and Matt Stone had their first film, Cannibal the Musical, um, which was their film coming out of University of Colorado. This is way before South Park. Um, and then also a guy named James Marandino had a film called The Upstairs Neighbor. And separately, they'd done little screenings in hotel rooms but had gotten a little bit of press for it. And we knew Trey and Matt had the same lawyer as us, I think, at the time. So we'd heard about these guys. And we thought, okay, well, that's an interesting idea. And especially, and this is largely Dana Altman's idea, to kind of combine it with the concept of of getting filmmakers from all over the country to kind of help each other and combine resources. And and then we said, all right, well, let's stick a name on it called Slam Dance. And you know, so we got ultimately a dozen features and a dozen shorts, and we showed up in Park City and did our thing. You know, and uh, and and people loved our spirit and what we were doing, and and it was a lot of fun. And even while we were there, the first year, we actually put a deposit down. Uh, Peter Baxter, who's now running Slam Dance, he and I put a deposit down on. Uh, I think it was his money. I made sure it was his money. Yeah. Um, on the, the Yarrow Hotel, which, which ultimately was our venue then for the next year. Um, and kind of with the idea that, okay, w- there's this niche of first-time directors working with limited budgets who don't have distribution that was being left behind by Sundance. And so if it worked for us, why not help other filmmakers in subsequent years? And I said, that's a crazy idea. It'll never <laughs> fly. We should just get out while the going's good. And then he's like, no, no, let's stick with it. And um, and we have now, we're heading into our 20th year, and over the years we've shown, you know, it has been beneficial to a lot of filmmakers who, you know, I mean, I'm sure their careers would have been okay, but, you know, uh, we are very proud to have shown the first films by, you know, Christopher Nolan, uh, 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 Greg Matola, um, uh, Mark Forster, who's got Planet Z, or World War Z coming out, um, Matt, uh, ben Zeitlin, we showed her, his first short, uh, Lena Dunham, her first short, Lynn Shelton, Drake DeRamis, Oren Pelly, uh, you know, all kinds of, I mean, the list kind of goes on and on. 
and um, so it's definitely it's it's shown that there's a niche for slam dance, e- even though uh, literally by the second year, I mean, as early as the second year after we started, um, Sundance had kind of responded by creating different by expanding their offerings. And actually, uh, first it was called the rectum, no, sorry, the spectrum section. And then now it's called Next, but it's essentially the same idea. You know, they've added other sections. So they, they do show more films and they show more films by first time directors. And I, so I think we've kind of kept that pressure on them to, to stay more relevant. But the reality is there's still so many films and there's still enough good ones that, you know, there's enough for, for everyone. So it, it's not very, it's not dissimilar also from uh, Cannes has um, uh, Director's Fortnite, which started in 1968 or 69 by a group of disgruntled directors and it's still going on you know 42 years later or something so um so you know it's a, it's a you know we didn't invent the wheel you know it's a tradition in, in the film festival world and it goes back to other art institutions for hundreds of years back too what i'm wondering is when something's new and fresh people kind of champion it a yeah. little bit and then time sets in and for whatever reason sometimes roadblocks appear oh, yeah. for whatever it is whether it's People get tired of it or whatever. Did you experience that with the festival maybe in your fifth year or whatever? And how did you move through that? Because sometimes there's these growing pains that don't happen right away. Right. And then stuff gets, doors get shut. Well, with every festival that I have know closely, uh, usually about the third year, <laughs> you know, that's when people turn on each other and there's these internecine battles and arguments that go on behind the scenes. And yeah, Slamance went through that. A few times, you know, over the years. But that keeps it interesting. You know? Oh, sure. Um, but then there are the external roadblocks. I mean, Sundance tried to kick us out of town. And they, they had the sheriff, literally, the, the, uh, the police chief in town, try to kick us out multiple times over the years. They would try to buy us out of each of these venues. Um, and we got very, I mean, partially by design and by luck, uh, we found a great home, finally, after a couple of years, at, at uh, the Treasure Mountain Inn which is run by a great couple, Andy and Thea, who, who um, uh, they didn't particularly like Sundance. So they were like the one kind of mom and pop hotel left in town. The, the rest were kind of more corporatized. And so they were like, hey, we like these Slamdance guys. This is more our style. And so they've been a great home for us over the years. And now Andy's actually on the city council. So, you know, and, and now we're friends with the new mayor. And you know, so... You know, I mean, uh, it's it's not for nothing. I started in politics. You know, we 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 knew early on, kind of, to make friends with the locals because a lot of the locals don't particularly like Sundance. You know, so for all kinds of reasons. So we're like, okay, it, it's much easier for local Park City people to buy tickets to Slam Dance, and we we make it a lot simpler and easier for them. And and you know, a lot of them really like us. But part of it is also we we stuck very early to a very strict sort of mantra of how we would run things so the main competition it's just first-time directors you know limited budgets with with no u.s distribution in place so we're not so we avoided a lot of the traps that happened to sundance and also to a lot of other little upstart festivals that sort of came and went over the years in park city and there have been a lot of them but um you know we've never been beholden to harvey weinstein or any or anyone else it's just by virtue of how we set set it up in the first place, and also the way we do our programming, every film is watched by at least two people. All the programmers are filmmakers themselves. There's no one senior programmer at all, uh, and there never has been. And um, you know, there's no early invitation, so you know we can't just go to Toronto and say, "Oh, I like that film. Let's program that." And then by the time you get to the main programming, there's only two slots left for anyone. With us, it's you know, all the decisions are made at, the, at the, the final time. So it's very unique in the festival world how we do our programming. Um, and, and all the programmers are, are alumni filmmakers themselves, so they've all been through this. Um, so, you know, so by kind of setting up these kind of institutional, you know, methods of how we do things, uh, that's given us our credibility over the long term, I think. 